Oh, hey everyone, I'm Doug. I'm Wit. And we are the, the stream, stream team. team. <laughs> <laughs> we actually got it in sync. Uh, so today's topic, and we're totally not recording this on the same day as another video, but today's topic is um, <laughs> video switchers. Like yes. The very basics of how to use a video switcher. So some of the um, basic principles. So yeah, have you ever used a switcher? Here, yes. Just just the bare necessity of yeah. pressing camera two buttons, one, camera, camera two, two. Camera two. <laughs> <laughs> and it's already set up for me. So um, yeah, that's about it. So video switcher, what is it? Start there. Um, a, the video switcher <laughs> is uh, what you use to go between, switch between camera cameras mm -hmm. exactly. and to make it go live, I guess mm -hmm. you need, some of the switchers have it in yeah, it's so like streaming. Yeah, yeah. Streaming in yeah, it, and some yeah. of them don't. Yeah, m the overwhelming majority don't. Right. But yeah, like the A10 Mini Pro, it can do streaming by itself. It doesn't need mm -hmm. a separate box. But for most, most switchers out there, you you would need a separate box in order to go online to, to do your live streaming. So. So. And it doesn't have to necessarily always be a cut. We can also do things like dissolves and Which some are wipes. Ugly. <laughs> Which are ugly. <laughs> Depends on what you're shooting. No one though. really uses those anymore, though. I, I use dissolves quite a lot for music. Oh, music, maybe. Yeah, yeah when we're shooting a concert or something like that. Especially yeah. for slower songs. Mm -hmm. But most of for most everything else, dissolves don't necessarily make a lot of sense. And wipes almost never <laughs> make sense. Yeah, that's kind of old school. <laughs> I don't know anyone yeah. that uses wipes. Yeah, not for, not for wipe switching. So... Don't, don't use it ever. <laughs> Unless you're trying to make it old 80s type. There you go. Shoot. Star wipe. <laughs> <laughs> you go really cheesy. You go the heart wipe, right? <laughs> yep. That's a good one. Okay. So with switcher, there's a couple different uh, form factors. So there's some that are like mounted in a rack. Mm -hmm. So it's just a piece of equipment. Usually doesn't have much, by the way, of buttons on it. And then there's others that sit on a desk and kind of a console sort of thing. So... Um, these are the control panels, a couple of control panels for rack mounted switch. From Blackmagic. Yeah, these, these are Blackmagic ones. So yeah, this is what they call the 2ME broadcast panel, and this is the 1ME advanced panel. Um, both will control pretty much any of their switchers, but obviously you're going to get a lot more functionality out of one like this. Um, a lot more money. That's a heck of a lot more money. Yeah, <laughs> you could buy a small car for what this one costs. So, but th th those aren't the only ones as well. I mean, you've got this form factor here, where all the buttons are on the device itself. So. I like this one. It's a little less intimidating. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> There's only so many things you can do. Right. Yeah, but that's the downside of it, though, too. I mean, yeah. if you need to do anything very sophisticated, then you do have to kind of step up to something more. It's a little more higher end. So, um, for my switcher, I don't own one of those control panels. I actually use this unit but this is not normal i mean you wouldn't if you walk into a video production facility you wouldn't see this sitting there you no. would see something like this i mainly did this two for two reasons one cost this is way way cheaper than mm -hmm. one of these but also flexibility i can make any of these buttons do anything i want Whereas, oh because you can customize i can cut yeah because like th yeah. I, there's actually software behind this what is this one called this is the x keys xke 128 the hundred black magic no, X Keys. No. Uh, uh, well, oh, PI Engineering is actually the brand, but okay. yeah, the series is called X Keys. So, yeah, Got it. yeah. Um, I just assume everything's black magic <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Most of my stuff in my trailer actually is. <laughs> this is more or less the same collection of buttons that you find on that big console. Okay. It's just in software, and so you're using your computer to control the device. So, so, so we can kind of cover some of this, and then I'll sh and then we'll show you how to do it over here. So. Is this the software for the A10 Mini? The same software does work with the A10 Mini as okay. well, but right now we're controlling my bigger switcher, which is a 2ME Production Studio 4K. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. Um, I'm never going to remember that. <laughs> Just so everyone Nor would knows. you be expected no to. No one quiz me on that, that <laughs> one, please, later. So, um, but just, just briefly, uh, it looks way more intimidating than it really is. I mean, there's a lot of buttons here, right? But... My switcher is, it, it, it's called 2ME because it actually has what they call two mix effects engines. That's what ME stands for, mix effects. Okay. Um, but that, what that allows me to do is to create two separate programs at the same time. So I could be doing two different live streams off, this, off of one switcher or doing a live stream 
plus a separate feed up on a projector and Oops, yeah there's... so so we'll just be going to be focusing on the bottom half and then a little bit of what's over here most switchers operate on what we call a preview program so what that means is you choose whatever source you want to be next and then you can see that in a preview window so you look up up here that's the next source and then the program over here that's whatever is currently going out to recording or your live stream. So that's the program feed. Right. And preview is whatever you want to be next. That allows you to make sure that the shot is good, it's in focus, it's framed the way you want. Most of the time when we're doing live production, we're also talking to our camera operators and putting out something on preview and talking to the operator that's on that camera. Yeah. That's a good time to do it, right? It's mm -hmm. like, hey, hey, I need you to go in a little bit tighter Yeah. or whatever. And then if we want to change what's on preview, that's where these buttons down here come in. So. If I want to preview camera three, click on the three, and that changes that source. So now that said, that's what these buttons down here are for. So we've got buttons one, two, three. Mm -hmm. So you can press one of those and change whatever source is going to be on preview. So yeah, there we go. Source one is now on preview. Is that just me? That's you. I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So one camera one is just you. Two is both of us. Three is just me. So yep. three, there's you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then four is just the computer. Yep, exactly. Got it. So, and that's, that just, that's, you determine that based on how you hook up the switcher. So if whatever camera you plug into input one, that's the one that shows up on one. It usually makes sense to kind of a certain sort of system. So like left to right with your cameras or something like that. that it makes it a little easier when you're running the switcher to keep in mind. Okay. To know whose yeah. camera. Yeah. I sometimes will remember to change these to actually show the camera operator's name so that I'm not like panicking. Oh yeah, who's on one? So, yeah. But, but yeah, having, mine's pretty easy because my voice. <laughs> can I always tell him. I'm, I'm always the only girl. <laughs> <laughs> but when you don't talk back. You yeah, know, that's true. So, you yeah. Know. So, but it's it's always helpful have a system. So so yeah. So you use the preview bus to figure out what shot you ever want to have go next, and then we're already on to. So if you were to, there you go. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> and so, <laughs> once you once you've once you've selected your <laughs> selected your shot that you want to go next, then that's that's when that's when the cut or auto button comes into play. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think cut would do? <laughs> cut. Just a simple cut between so it's between shots. So. No dissolve. Nothing. Just right. straight to the next shot. Okay. All right. So you want to practice it? So. Yeah. Well, we already had two on preview. So cutting doesn't do anything at the moment. So yeah, you so go to a different shot. Three. Three, yep, yeah, there you go. Cut. There you go. And now camera three is live. And what was pre on previously on program is now on preview. They switch places. You guys are camera two, this, yeah, this one. The center's camera two, but, but camera one is actually the one that's, or camera three is the one that's live right now. So it's, oh. it's right now it's just looking at me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, when, when you switched it, before you switched it, camera two was on program. Oh, it's because your head's in the way. <laughs> My big head. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I don't see it. Yeah. So okay, that makes that's more program, sense. program, yeah. Okay. So that's what's recording right now. Mm -hmm. Right? And then this one's whatever's next. And before you hit the cut button, camera two was over here, and camera three was the one you had selected on, on preview. Mm -hmm. And when you, hit, when you hit cut, they just they switch places. So if you hit cut again, they'll switch places one, one more time. And there you go. So then, okay. yeah. So you're alternating back and forth between preview and program. Okay, <laughs> got it. Just gotta do it a couple more, a couple times to let it sink in. Yeah. So, but yeah, the preview is basically there to allow you to decide what's next and make sure that everything about the shot is good, all ready to go. Mm -hmm. And then when it's kind of, when it comes time to actually switch shots, then you do your cut. Now th there's another button here, auto. It's also sh you know, right here. Mm -hmm. That is your dissolve. Typically, your dissolve, but you, you can change the function of that. So, oh, okay. go ahead and press it. We should get a dissolve. There we go. Yep, dissolve between the two cameras. Mm. And then. I don't like that it says auto though. So it's an automatic. It? It's an automatic transition from one to the other. And the reason it doesn't oh. say dissolve is because you can switch what effect it does. Like a so, wipe. Yep. So yeah. So that actually. Oh, this says wipe right here. Yeah. So there's a button here. So up here we have mix, dip, which. Is like a 
dip to black? Or? Uh -huh. And okay. uh, in this case, it's uh, dipped to a selected color. Like right now, it's blue. <laughs> oh. So it looked ra ra rather weird. Yeah, and then a wipe. And then Sting is kind of unique to this switcher, but a Stinger is where you use an animation to switch between sh two shots. Oh. So you do that to that. And then DVE, that's digital effects, digital video effect. And that would allow you to do something like have the picture shrink to a corner. A DVE basically oh, okay. allows you to resize any video source, resize mm -hmm. or move it around. So you can use the DVE to have it shrink to a corner or something like that. So, so those are, those are kind of your five basic transitions that are available on at least the higher end Blackmagic switchers. So, so and or can, any switcher. Really? Or different brands have different normal? different different brands have different but you're always gonna have a cut, you're always gonna have a dissolve, you're always gonna have a wipe. Okay. Um, so and then most of your higher end are gonna have some sort of D V E transition. Uh, oh, okay. So so yeah. So with that said Yeah. <laughs> uh, we can do a wipe. So I press the wipe button here, which the same as pressing this button on screen. There you go. Yeah, and then auto will actually do the transition. There you go. So ugly. <laughs> I hate it. I know it's your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go. So, and then we, let's do... I can press buttons. <laughs> let's do... I hope the, you guys are impressed. <laughs> the, let's do the, a DVE. So I just kind of see an example of what that is. So press that and then hit auto. There you go. So, animated off screen. Could you see it? Yeah. It's kind of ugly, too, but whatever. <laughs> well, it depends on what you're shooting. You know, you wouldn't do that for, like, a funeral, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, yeah. But if you're doing, like, a high-energy music concert, something like that might actually make some sense. So it depends on context, you know? I've done some fun stuff like that when we get into crazy music or something like that. So, so but that's, that's kind of the, the, um, the, your, your basics for transitions. Okay, all right, now I'm gonna show you the other thing here. So there's also a section of the screen here that's program. So preview down here and then up here is program. What this allows you to do is actually change shots without having to go through that whole process, select the shot and do the transition. It's a, just an immediate cut mm -hmm. from one shot to another. And on, on my panel here, that's what these red buttons are for. Okay. So if you wanted to select camera one, for example, you just hit one and one. it just goes to it. And the preview gets left alone. Preview doesn't change because you're not yeah. switching between the two. And what would be the point of this, just to do it if you just re If you really need, yeah, it's like I need to get to another shot real fast, I don't have time to mess with the pressing the preview and then hitting. So it's called cutting on the bus and it's kind of discouraged, uh, but it's there when you need it. And there's been a lot of times I've needed, like, for example, one of my hands is tied up. I, 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 got a piece of equipment I'm working on or something or like eating that. eating a sandwich. Yeah, whatever. You know, in that case, I can use my left hand to just cut on the bus. Yeah. When I do stuff for him, this is usually... Yeah, because it's easier, right? Yeah, I don't need to see the preview. The downside is you're not seeing the preview before you actually go live with it. So if you hit the wrong button, you, you don't you have You better any... know your buttons. Yeah, exactly. You don't have any <laughs> you warning. you go to the wrong camera. You don't get any warning about what, what, what shot's going to be next. Yeah. It, just, it just goes. Well, so. and then usually when I'm running the camera, if it's green, I'll see that I'm up next mm -hmm. if I don't hear you mm -hmm. say something. Right. So I'll get prepared for the shot and I'll know that, okay, I'm going to be up next and then you'll say, cut to camera three. Right. And then it will go red and I know I'm live. Right. So yeah. it's and a good way to prepare the that's camera the, that's, the, that's the advantage to doing the preview thing. Like, yeah, you, if, if you have a tally system that allows mm -hmm. the camera operators to see what, what shot's going to be next. Then, right. Yeah. You give the them tally system is just a light. Yep. that indicates if you're live or not. Red is you're live, green is you're up next, yeah. you're on deck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but not, not a lot of them actually have the green, the no? preview fun functionality. Yeah, it's kind oh. of a, a rare, um, rare rare feature, so it's nice to have. But, yeah. So. Green does not mean go. <laughs> yeah, In green means case. you're about to go. <laughs> right. Red means... Red, stop. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't move, don't uh, do anything crazy with your camera because you're mm -hmm. live, right? So that's that's the program bus. So you know, it just when everything you do on the program bus happens right away. You don't get any warning. <laughs> Camera operators don't get any warning. It just goes. Yeah. So there if we need it, but not the recommended way to run a switcher. So I I, I've actually I known a few way. directors that cut on the bus most of the time. It drives me crazy if I'm operating a camera for them. Do they warn you though? 
Not always. <laughs> See, I can't do that. I can't do it if I'm not being warned that I'm on the shot. Because sometimes you need to, like, if it's a long yeah. thing, like yeah. an hour and a half, two hours, you can't just sit here and be perfectly still or have the perfect shot the entire time. Sometimes you need to move or take a right. break or change or, a battery or, or even just reposition you know if, yeah if you've been on a wide shot and all of a sudden you need a tight shot you need to know when you're clear so that mm -hmm. you can because i've done it i think i've done it a couple of times where they didn't they forgot to tell me and i was live and i was like face the camera was facing the ground because i was switching hands mm -hmm. yep it happens it happens to all of us <laughs> one time or another you're trying to make me look bad man <laughs> So I'll say that this, it's the director's fault whenever that happens. They should they should be previewing the shot before they take it live. Whenever, yeah. Whenever they possibly can. Got it. So. And then there's a hundred other buttons. Yeah, there's a hundred. There's a ton of other buttons on here. But those those that that's a good starting point. Um, right. And that's probably a, actually a good point to break for this video. Okay. Um, it's where preview program. Uh, it's kind of how pretty much all the switchers out there actually work. There are some other modes you can put some of them into, but. In the real world, you generally don't find people ever using any, any of those other modes. Yeah. So. so you could either do it on here or on... Or on the software. On yep. the software. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and, and there's plenty of other pieces of hardware out there that you can use to interface with this. Mm. So one of the most popular out right, right there, out, out right now is called the Stream Deck and with a piece of software called, the Compan called BitFocus Companion. So I should have gotten mine out. I have one. <laughs> but, uh, Let's show that in the next one. Yeah. So... Yeah, but just uh, there's all sorts of different ways of doing it. Um, if you don't have, if you don't want to invest in one of these, you can use the software, or if you have a switcher that actually has buttons on it, you just use the buttons right on the switcher as well. So I like the buttons. <laughs> but as you mentioned about this though, notice there's no green. So the way that the ATM Mini comes, you're cutting on the bus. You're cutting. So you program. are cutting. Yeah. Yeah. The bad way. Yeah. <laughs> So, and then you choose your transition type with the buttons over here. So if you want to do a dissolve, you hit that first, and then you hit the button to do the dissolve. Mm. If you want to do a cut, then you select that. So it's backwards. You select your transition type first, and then choose your camera, instead of choosing your camera, and then your transition. So, so but that's, that's configurable. That's configurable. So oh, okay. yeah, yeah, and set up for this, you can switch it to the preview program. Okay. So yeah, it depends on what you're, what you like, what you're comfortable with, you know, if you're, if you're in a situation like this where you have two people talking back and forth, you probably don't want to be bothered with preview transition, preview transition. So, you know, you have something like this, keep it out of, out of sight and then just press the buttons. Yeah. So, anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did Long we lose ya? <laughs> These are things we normally talk about, but we just don't have to worry about a camera, usually. Yeah. So. But yeah, there it is. You guys get to see so. the behind the scenes. We'll cover more about switchers in another video. Um, there's so much more to cover. <laughs> um, we haven't even gotten into things like graphics and uh, how you overlay a graphic on top of on top mm -hmm. of the video. So if you want to do lower thirds or whatever, you know, PowerPoint life, slides. Yeah. So we haven't covered any of that stuff, but we will. Um, but if you just want to cut between different cameras, this is all you need to know. Yeah, really good start. Yep. Okay. So. Yeah. All right. You feel comfortable with it? You want to run Switcher for me on our, our next event? Yeah, I do actually. <laughs> That'd be cool. So, so the person who operates the Switcher, their position is called the technical director. So. I'm a director. <laughs> Maybe not technically. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, but uh, also be sure to like the video and subscribe oh, to the I channel. I always forget to say that. <laughs> Dang it. You want to say it? <laughs> Well, I mean, at the beginning of the video, yeah. like, share, subscribe, yeah. because this is all going to fall apart if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Every Tuesday and Thursday, we're planning on having one of these out, so yep. plan on that. And then tentatively every fourth episode, a live Q&A. Yes. So. We just did one. Another day, right? <laughs> it was a another few days ago. Another day when we did one. <laughs> yep. Exactly. So you guys can go check out episode four to see what the Q&A is like. Yeah. So anyway, that's all we got. So thanks for watching. All right. <laughs> see you later.